Friday had come and gone. Jesus' lifeless body had been laid in a tomb. Saturday was sad. Jesus' lifeless body laid still on a cold stone slab, his body wrapped in cloths, still dark and cold. Jesus' lifeless body laid on a cold stone slab, and a massive round stone sealed the tomb. There was no way in and no way out. The night was long. There was no reason to rise with the morning sun. He was dead. He was dead. But as the sun rose on Sunday morning and a new day awoke, the lifeless body of Jesus began to breathe. His body began to move. The cloths that wrapped his body were folded and put aside. The stone began to roll. Light filled the tomb. Jesus was alive. We celebrate this great event every year at this time. It reminds us that Jesus is our salvation, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that nothing is impossible for God, that death has been defeated, sin has been paid for, and eternal life has been given to all who believe. It's the story of the greatest victory in history. It's the beginning of life eternal, promises fulfilled. It's known as the resurrection of Jesus. Say it with me. He is alive. Today, boys and girls, we're going to take a look at this glorious day in history. Welcome to the Kids Central Online. Today, we are going to have a virtual Easter egg hunt. So be watching and looking for Easter eggs. You never know when they're going to show up. But when they do, keep a count of how many you've seen. Send me an email at paul at mycentral.church. Include your name, your address, and the number of eggs you saw in the video. And I'll send you a prize in the mail. Everyone who responds will get something in the mail. Now, let's get this party started. Stand up to your feet as we worship together with song. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. In the beginning, God made everything. God simply spoke and the world came to be. 
Hey kids, are you excited that it's Easter? I am, Pastor Paul. Oh, Scribbles, what's the most exciting part about today? There are so many. The Easter candy, the Easter basket, the Easter bunny, the Easter breakfast, the Easter games, the Easter sugar coma, AKA nap, the Easter supper, the Easter- But don't forget about the most important part of today. The Easter eggs. Uh, no, more important than that. The jelly beans. No. Searching for the Easter baskets. No, Scribbles. The most important part of today is remembering that Jesus rose from the grave and came back to life. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I mean, with all the other stuff. You know, sometimes with all the other stuff, it can make us forget about the most important part of the story. Jesus coming back to life after being dead. Wow! Now, let me ask you a question. What if you found your Easter basket, but there was nothing inside of it? That would be a total bummer. Or what if I erased your nose? Give me my nose back. Or erased your mouth. Mmm, 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 mmm. You know what, boys and girls, today we're going to be talking about how we're sometimes missing the most important part, Jesus. Can you imagine trying to work on a project at your desk while sitting in a chair with a missing piece? The legs? Or, imagine trying to pour yourself a refreshing bowl of cereal without a bowl! Or, imagine you're playing basketball with your friend, but there's a missing piece. The air in the ball! It can be really frustrating when you realize that there's a missing piece. But you know, the world is full of people who are walking around with a piece missing from their lives. And it's not just any piece, it's the most important piece. Jesus. Jesus is the reason we celebrate Easter. He died on the cross and rose again so that he could fill that missing piece in the life of every human being. It's game time! You get to choose between Clyde, the mall elf, or Greasy Pete as they compete in putting together a puzzle. Who will win? Will you choose the winner? Make your decision now! Hi, I'm Clyde, the mall Christmas elf. I'm out of a job right now. Yo! Hey boys and girls, like, don't eat rotten eggs. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs>
The other day, my wife was putting together a puzzle that she had worked on it for hours, and there was one piece left, but it was missing. Has that ever happened to you? What does that feel like? It feels unfinished, incomplete, like something's missing. It feels unsatisfying, unfulfilling. You feel let down. Jesus is the most important piece of our lives. He should be the centerpiece of our lives. The problem is that some people, that centerpiece is missing. Jesus, he was a real person who lived on this earth 2,000 years ago. He was born in strange circumstances in Bethlehem. He grew up in Nazareth with his mother Mary and her husband Joseph. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he started teaching people about God. He said he'd come from God and did some amazing miracles to prove it. He made sick people better, fed thousands of people with only a little bit of food, he told a storm to stop, and it did, and he even raised some dead people back to life. Some people loved it, but Jesus worried the leaders. They didn't like what he was saying and doing, so they arrested him and sentenced him to death. The soldiers took Jesus to Golgotha, which means place of the skull. There, they gave him some wine mixed with a drug to ease the pain, but he refused to drink it. They nailed Jesus to a cross and gambled to see who would get his clothes. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they nailed him to the cross. On it was a sign that told why he was nailed there. It read, This is the King of the Jews. The soldiers also nailed two criminals on crosses, one to the right of Jesus and the other to his left. People who passed by said terrible things about Jesus. They shook their heads and shouted, Ha! So you're the one who claimed you could tear down the temple and build it again in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. The chief priests and the teachers of the law also made fun of Jesus. They said to each other, He saved others, but he can't save himself. If he is the Messiah, the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross, then we will see and believe. About noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until around three o'clock. Then, about that time, Jesus shouted, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Some of the people standing there heard Jesus and said, is he calling for Elijah? One of them ran and grabbed a sponge. After he had soaked it in wine, he put it on a stick and held it up to Jesus. He said, let's wait and see if Elijah will come and take him down. Jesus shouted and then died. At once, the curtain in the temple tore in two from top to bottom. A Roman army officer was standing in front of Jesus. When the officer saw how Jesus died, he said, this man really was the Son of God. After the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary, the mother of James, bought some spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just as the sun was coming up, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance for us? But when they looked, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. It was a huge stone. The women went into the tomb, and on the right side they saw a young man in a white robe sitting there. They were alarmed. The man said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus from Nazareth, who was nailed to a cross. God has raised him to life, and he isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Now go and tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he will go ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Boys and girls, there's something missing in people's lives. A missing piece. And people try many things to try to fill 
the emptiness. They try to fill that missing thing. And they, there's lots of different things that people do. Some people think that if they just had enough money, then they would be happy. That would fill them up. That would help them because you know that money can buy just about anything. And it's fun to get stuff, but it doesn't fill that hole, that piece. It, it's not the right fit. Other people, they try to fill that space with accomplishments. Trying their hardest, working hard, doing their best. But even that doesn't fill, isn't the right piece that fits. Other people, they try to fill that emptiness, that piece that's missing with popularity and fame and, and relationships. But they always find out that those things aren't the right fit. None of these things fit. Why don't they cover that emptiness inside of our lives? It's very simple. God created us with that missing piece in our hearts. He created us so that He could be the only one that could fill that emptiness. Jesus is the missing piece. Nothing should come before him. If you want to fill that missing piece in your life, don't try filling it with anything but Jesus. Jesus is the only one that fits in that missing place in our lives. And boys and girls, that's the reason Jesus came to this earth. That's the reason he lived among us, to show us and to lead us to God. That's why, boys and girls, Jesus went to the cross willingly to die for our sins, to pay the price for the penalty of sin. Why? Because he wants to be the one to fulfill us. He wants to be the one that we worship and that we love with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. Boys and girls, Jesus rose from the grave to give us life. Why? So that we could be with God. He loves you. He desires our relationship with you, and He wants to fill that place in your life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for coming to this earth, living among us, showing us the way to God. Lord, the Bible says you are the way, the truth, and the life, that no one can come to the Father except through you. And Jesus, you led that way when you went to the cross on Calvary. When you shed your own blood, you were paying the price for our sin so that we could be redeemed, so that we could be made new, so that we could be free and we could live with you in heaven. And Jesus, three days later, after you died, you rose again to life to give us life to give us victory, to give us your love and to fill our hearts. Lord, we thank you. We praise you today. Boys and girls, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart to be your Lord, the one that's in control of you, and your Savior, the one who saves us, from the penalty of sin, then I would like to invite you to do that right now. Would you say this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I invite you today into my heart to be my Lord, the one that is in control, and to be my Savior, the one that can save me from sin. 
I give my life to you. I believe, Jesus, that you rose to life and that you are coming again. And one day, you will take me to be with you in heaven. But until that day, I want to serve you right here and live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, thanks for joining me on the Kids Central Online. Happy Easter. Rewind! Hey, boys and girls, last week I gave you a quarantine challenge to build an obstacle course and then to have your parents videotape you going through that obstacle course and to send it to me. Here are the videos I received.